Okay, so I'm going to show you how to swim long distance without getting tired. And that can be for lakes, it can be flat lagoons like this, rivers, ocean swimming, and with big waves. So it doesn't matter the fact that it's flat here, it works also in ocean swimming. And I'm proof to that having swam seven of the toughest ocean swims in the world with some really big swells. Okay, so let's get into it. First of all, breathing. That's key. A lot of people exhale too much and they end up starving themselves of oxygen. So in the past, we've been taught to really exhaust everything out of our system. But the problem with that is you then gasp for air and you don't do that on land. So whatever you do on land, you should do in the water. So what I recommend is taking a breath, breathing regularly, either every two like I do here or every three, whatever you're comfortable with. It doesn't matter whether it's two to the right or two to the left. It can be bilateral breathing. It doesn't matter. As long as you balance, that's the key. Now, when I breathe here, you can see that I push my temple into the water, so there's no excessive lifting. What I don't want to do is lift my head up because that's going to use neck and shoulder muscles, which I don't need to use, and that's going to require oxygen and energy. So what I actually do is push my temple into the water, which brings my hip up, but it means there's no energy lifting, and it means that I have an efficient body position. When I do breathe, what I do is I take a small breath. So 40-50% of my oxygen capacity, and then when my head goes down, I exhale again 40-50%. I then hold my breath just before taking another one. I hold my breath. The reason is, as I move my head to the side, I don't want to be exhaling because if I exhale and then try and take oxygen in, I'll get water in my mouth. That's the reason a lot of people get water in, is that exhale, exhale, there, and then take a breath. Well, it's too long. I exhale here. So in this video, you see I exhale. I stop, take a breath. Exhale, hold my breath. Now take a breath and then exhale when my head's back down in the water again. Stop, hold my breath, put my lips together, take another one. You see how water's not actually getting in my mouth as a result of that because I'm exhaling and stopping just before I turn my head to take another breath. If I keep exhaling, you'll see bubbles as I take a breath and water's likely to get in the mouth. That also helps with the rhythm as well. And every time that you exhale, into the water that's helping you swim more downhill because in my mind here I've trying to swim in that downhill motion so I've got a slightly lower arm and I'm pushing my chest down into the water so I'm connected with the water that also helps the hip come up and helps the body position so in breathing just to reiterate what you don't want to do is overly breathe in or overly exhale out it doesn't want to be forced I grab a breath, look as I turn my head, grab it, and then down, stop, and then exhale down, stop, take it in, stop, in, so as I'm exhaling, I stop, put my mouth together, then take another breath. And I'm sort of breathing at the side of my mouth, a bit Popeye style, as my head's connected with the water. But a lot of people don't realize, in order to get the best breathing position, you should push your temple into the water and not lift your head. So that's the first thing. The other thing that I want to talk about is the recovery arm. So the arm out of the water. This can burn a lot of energy if you do more than you have to. So here you can see my arm is very low to the water. I'm sweeping around in this semicircle that you've probably heard me say before. It's really quite effortless. The fingernails are very close to the top of the water. It's almost like an elbow sweep. So it's like my elbow's pushing in a semicircle motion which protects my shoulder but makes it effortless. What I'm not doing is lifting it high overhead. And you can see also my arm is never straight in that recovery position. I'm not extending it, lifting overhead, which also is going to put me off balance, but it's going to use a lot more shoulder and neck muscles as a result. So here I remain bent. It's almost like holding a ball in your elbow and I sweep it in that semicircle and I drop it into position. So it's never extended. It's only extended underwater, not on top. If you extend it on top of the water, the arm will be too high, which will 
also make it a problem for the catch and also its resistance. What you're trying to do is at least splash as possible and that works from having a bent elbow as you enter the water. That also helps the depth go down for the catch. So that's another thing. So it wants to be effortless. In terms of the hands, fingers apart. Think about how you walk. You don't walk with your fingers together because that would have your arm tense and your shoulders. Same in swimming. You want it nice, relaxed, just literally as you would walk. That's how I swim. So slightly apart, not massively wide apart, but just slightly enough. That gives you a bigger surface area to pull water back. But also, there's no tension again in the shoulder and neck. It's not locked. It's not causing you a problem in terms of extra effort. Remember, your body is a machine. You want to use as limited energy as possible. And that's arms, that's breathing, that's also leg kick. So moving on to the leg kick. It's a two beat leg kick. I use it to help me rotate. A lot of people who know the ocean walker technique know that it's a roll, a kick and a pull. So what I do is roll my feet in to take this arm into the water. Now I will then kick and then I'll pull when I'm on my side. So the idea is I have to get my top hip to the bottom. The kick acts as speeding the rotation, which speeds the momentum. Think of a hammer thrower or shot put on land. They spin round in order to throw the hammer or the shot put. That's where the power comes from. That's why they spin round to create that momentum. So I'm doing effectively the same. I'm going from one side to the other, creating that momentum. And so when I pull, I get this nice glide, which also saves me energy and effort. I'm gliding up to two meters here, which means that I'm not burning any unnecessary energy. So that's the other thing. And it just becomes one kick in order to get the hip sideways. I don't need to kick to balance because my head is nice and still. And my arm is lower. I'm nice and stable. The things that affect stability is arm lifting overhead. Also moving your head from side to side will knock you off balance. And then a lot of people kick in order to keep them stable. In this, you don't have to do that because you're nice and balanced with your head still looking down. While we're talking about the head, head wants to be looking down, eyes down, not looking forward. If you look forward, your hips want to drop. drop. That's extra effort again, inefficient body position. And by being higher with your chest, your arms will be higher as well. And it just has a, this knock on effect. So keep that semicircle sweep round. Nice still head looking down. You've got your two beat kick as well. And when I breathe, I breathe to the side, making it very effortless. So, so those are the things that I want you to look at and, and think about when you're working on it, which will save you a lot of energy. So here you can see now I'm doing a bit of sighting as well. But even with the sighting, there is not a big lift of the head. I only just rise enough for the eyes to clear the water. No more than that, because I want to keep my hip up. If I strain my neck, then that's muscles that I'm going to use that, I, that is unnecessary which is going to use a lot of effort. So everything should be low, connected to the water. Stay in tune with it. And that's really important. No lifting, no excessive head lifting, arm lifting, because it will have a knock on effect. Imagine swimming downhill. If you imagine swimming downhill, you're going to have a nice hip, high hip body position. Your arms are going to be naturally elevated by being on the side as well. That's important. Um, if you swim flatter, your arms will be lower and you will have to lift overhead. You won't be able to do this low semicircle sweep. So it's important to learn to swim side to side. You can learn that through Ocean Walker Vimeo. Okay, I hope that helps. Have a go.